so my daughter last year started um, crying, like when I left, mm -hmm. and was really worried about me. Something happening to me, and mm -hmm. even it's cropping up even even now, but a, a, to a lesser degree. Are you going to be okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't really at first. I didn't recognize that that could be attributed to to her her mm -hmm. medical condition. But after speaking with a social worker, she said, well, you know, kind of their cup is full and any little anxiety could s come out in a different way. And so mm -hmm. I kind of felt that that was related to it. So I didn't know if you could elaborate on maybe sure. some of the other things. That That's actually very, um, very common, separation anxiety with children with, I mean, it's it's common with children, but particularly children with food allergies. Um, so yes, it could be I'm experiencing so much stress already that if mommy's gone, I'm just feeling extra stressed out. But the other piece is oftentimes is who's the person who I count on the most to keep me safe? And generally, it is mommy or daddy when we're young. So if something happens to mommy or daddy, who's, you know, not is it just mommy and daddy is not going to be here, but who's the person to keep me safe. So you see it oftentimes creep up too. You might think, oh, my child just wants to go to this birthday party, and then you're you know, going to back away, and they cling to you. And that is who keeps me safe. Mommy does. Um, I don't really know this person's mommy. Um, so that often happens. And, and that's just where I, um, I forgot to make a copy. I'll, before I leave, I'll make a copy. But I do something with children. We, call it, we make our own teams. So the child's the captain of the team, and then they pick their players. And these are the people that are going, that they feel the safest with. So if you imagine, you know, I'm, I'm here, I'm the captain, and then the people in my immediate circle are the people who I feel the safest with. And then the outside circle would be the next, and then the people who I really don't trust or count on, they're out here. Um, so we, and I have them identify who do you want to be on your team, and I explain to them if someone doesn't respond appropriately, we want to tell them, you know, that they didn't feel safe, but then we can also fire people from our team if we need to. <laughs> um, and so generally on the team we have problem solver, solvers, so um, if I don't like where I'm sitting in the cafeteria, here's the people, here are my problem solvers, I can go to them. Um, who are the people that are gonna be my emotional safety net? So when I'm scared, who are my um, helpers? And they identify those players. And then we have the people, so we, we often forget this, and this is very important, who are the people that I like to have fun with? Because you know we get to, we're so focused on the negative sometimes that we forget to say well who who are the people that I trust and who are the people that I like to have fun with. So when I was explaining um, just for myself when I was younger, I had a core group of friends that I really felt um, safe with. And I felt, felt safe with their parents and I felt safe with them as I grew older. Um, and so and because it wasn't you know a lot of times kids come in and they say well, I can't do this, or maybe another kid, you know, you might hear another child say, whoa, well, oh, no, um, you know, Johnny, he can't do that because he has allergies, or he, and, and they react. Um, I recently had someone in my office who said, uh, <laughs> who actually didn't have an allergy, and was telling me a story how they were out to dinner with someone who did, and every couple minutes they said, I don't know why they got so mad at me, because I just kept asking if they were okay when they were eating, I was afraid they were gonna eat something, and so I had to explain to the child, so, well, how compassionate of you is that, but then to, let's take a peek at how maybe the other child was feeling. You know, we're, we're make, they might be anxious already to be out, and now we're making them extra anxious. So, you know, we can't control how other people are responding sometimes, um, but that's why, you know, pulling in the people that you know your child feels safe with, and the people who will stand up for them too, because that's important. I mean, unfortunately, there are some, you know, I guess you'd call them maybe bullying cases with children with allergies. Um, I personally feel that that really <coughs> comes from adults not understanding. So they hear, oh, my child can't bring peanut butter and jelly to school, and they don't really understand. Um, and, and then I think it flows down to the kids. But sometimes that occurs as well. So again, it's having that, that core group. And then as I grew older, it was, um, you know, maybe at Christmas time, instead of cookie swaps, we made, you know, when I was in high school, we made music CDs and gave them to each other. Um, or we, you know, would cook together. So even at, when I was, you know, younger, we would have these 
fancy parties where we would get dressed up and cook our um, gluten-free pasta <laughs> um, at home together. And then, you know, it turns out that as we got a little bit older, some of them actually developed their own allergies. So now I don't eat gluten, one of them doesn't eat nuts, and the other one doesn't have dairy. So <laughs> we're a great group. Um, but that, that's just what's really important is having those that, that um, close-knit group. Now, one thing that does happen, I think, as I've seen t when kids go to college, um, that there's some pieces involved there too. And so one thing that we've talked about, or even in high school, is if they worry, you know, I know my coach knows, and I know my friends know, but I'm still a little anxious, we do talk about, you know, some of them feel safe with, they don't wear their bracelets all the time, but when they go somewhere where they don't necessarily, you know, maybe mom or dad isn't there, and at some point mom and dad can't be there all the time because that has a negative effect, um, that they might wear their bracelet or, you know, and we talk about how to plan, who do you tell uh, beforehand and who, who do you show, you know, where everything is located. So, but on the other side, you know, I've had some teens that have had food allergies and, you know, I had one that wasn't coming to me for food allergy but had an allergy and, and was confident enough that mm, she was actually, I don't know if she, she was out of the country, which is quite far away, and she had a reaction, and uh, she gave herself her EpiPen. She called 911. She went to the emergency room, and then she hopped back out and continued with the group that she was with. So, I mean, there is, I, I think the, the, mo the biggest struggle tends to be ages 6 to 11. We're just, I, I can't control my food allergy, and then I can't control how people around me react because children at that age are so dependent on the adults. And, and that's what's very scary, is having to be very dependent on other people to handle the situation and keep them safe. Um, so that's where a lot of the anxiety comes from. It, it will creep, I've seen it creep back if they've had a reaction. Um, and then at different stages, again, like going to college can create some anxiety as well. Um, depending on how significant the allergy, some social issues that have come up is um, when they start dating, if depending on again how allergic they are, if they have to you know ask their partner what they have eaten, um, if they wanted to give them a kiss goodnight because some some people have allergies that they they can't do that um, without really knowing. So that's where some of those pieces come in, but. I think when handled with a support group, handled with a therapist, and really having a strong, you know, what's, what I find is very important is just having a strong family support too, um, really helps with making it through some of the hurdles. But one thing, and, and I'll show you, is that I do get a lot of children, you know, at certain points saying, what's wrong with me? Um, I'm different. And so we do talk about how everyone has something, you know, some children have asthma and they see them have to go use their inhalers and maybe they can't run the mile. Um, some children have diabetes, though I, I will say studies have shown that children with food allergies do tend to have higher anxiety levels than these other um, diagnoses due to that they're unpredictable um, so because we don't always know what's, you know, a child knows if I run I'm going to have an asthma attack and sometimes, you know, something else triggers it, but it's the food piece that because we need food to live, and, I, and that's what is, is a struggle. Um, so something that I do with children who have, you know, start saying things like, well, I don't like myself, um, something's wrong with me. I, this is my, my drawing today, but um, I, we draw them, and then we fill up their body with all the things that they like about themselves, all the things that they're good at, um, and in there we do put food allergy or allergy and when they take a peek when they're done and they fill their entire body and then we try to find the allergy you know it's just to show the child that well that allergy is just one small piece of all these under one other great things about you and yes it does create anxiety sometimes and yes it does create frustration but let's look at all the other good pieces about you so what's just so important is that the allergy doesn't define the child and sometimes that starts to happen as they get so hyper focused on it or the or just due to fear the family gets very hyper focused on it that the child then starts to define themselves that way um, 
So when I, I think I gave you a handout and just one of the pieces in there as far as things to do to help promote um, well-being in a child is to really foster all the things that they feel that they do well. You know, other activities, non food related, but um, they like horseback riding or they like soccer is just to help them, you know, by engaging them in all these activities, which really helps with self-esteem.